Hello there, it's Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. If you've ever thought about upgrading your webcam to a DLSR or mirrorless camera, you're going to find this video incredibly useful because in the video, I'm going to be going through the differences between a DLSR or a mirrorless camera and the webcam and whether or not it's worth it to upgrade to a mirrorless camera. I've been using a mirrorless camera for around about three quarters of the time that I've been streaming and creating content on YouTube. I'm going to be showing exactly how you can set up a DLSR slash mirrorless camera for streaming on Twitch or on YouTube gaming or on Facebook gaming. So yeah, it will literally be a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up the mirrorless camera. I'll also just show some settings for OBS Studio and a little bit of troubleshooting as well towards the end of the video in case you encounter any problems or you need that extra little bit of help. As always, if you find it useful, feel free to hit the like button. It really helps me. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. Let's go. First up, a quick word from my partners and sponsors for this video, Owned.TV. Owned.TV do a load of stuff for streamers. They've got so many different tools, tips, and designs that you can access through their website. If you're not using Owned.TV for your streaming tools, you're more than likely not making the most of the real estate on your stream. The best part about this is if you use code MACHINE at the checkout, you will get 50% off any purchases at Owned.TV, and you'll also be supporting my channel in the process so i really really appreciate that check out own.tv and let me know how you guys get on Okay, so I've got here the Sony A5100. It's one of the older versions of the mirrorless camera. It's trustworthy. I've used this for a long, long time, and this is what I'm going to be doing the basis of, and I will be going into some of the settings within the Sony as well. If you're using a Sony A5100, then you'll find this incredibly useful, but even if you're not, you'll probably find aspects of this video useful. It's things that you have to consider when you are setting up any mirrorless camera for streaming. So the Sony A5100 does come with a stock lens, which allows you to zoom and I think the zoom ratio is something like 17 to 50 millimeter or something like that. I tend to keep mine at around about 23 millimeter, but that's just what I've got used to. And a really great thing about mirrorless cameras is that when you're interacting with the camera, because it's a mirrorless, you can see a screen, you can flip the screen upside down. Unlike a webcam, you can see what you're doing in the camera. So it's really, really useful to have that interaction there. The difference is massive because when you're streaming, you can actually see how your face looks on camera without having to refer to OBS Studio. A really strong point versus using a webcam. So let's first just talk about gear for a second here. The stuff you're going to need, of course, you're going to need some sort of DLSR or mirrorless camera. It has to have an HDMI output from the camera to your PC. Obviously, it needs some sort of battery, so it needs to be powered, of course, and that's where a dummy battery will go in. We'll get into that in a second. Next up, you're going to need a HDMI mini to go into the Sony A5100 or whatever is compatible with the camera you're using. And then we're going to need a HDMI on the other end that will go into the 4K camera link from Elgato in this case, but there are some cheaper versions available. You're going to need something that will convert the HDMI into a USB signal. And this is where something like a cam link will come into play. And often the cam links will come with a little bit of like a, I don't know, like a 20, 30 centimeter extender, which just means you can conveniently plug it into your PC. It's purely just an extender there. Next up, you're going to need the dummy battery. This simply just powers the camera whilst you are streaming on a continual basis rather than having to recharge the camera. We'll get into a little bit more detail about this later on in the video. So when you're looking for these products, I've put some links in the description below. You'll be supporting the channel if you check out the pricing, but it's for the Camlink 4K or some cheaper alternatives to the Camlink 4K. I've always used the Camlink 4Ks. They've always been absolutely fine for me, and we'll do some troubleshooting about them later on in the video, but you may not be able to afford those, and that's fine. There are some cheaper alternatives. I don't have experience with those, so they're not ones that I would recommend, but they are alternatives. I'll also provide links to the Sony A5100 and any other products that I mentioned in this video, including the Sony ZV-1, the dummy battery packs, and also the HDMI wires. So now let's just cover some end-to-end -end setup information for the DLSR or the mirrorless camera. You're going to need to place the dummy battery inside the camera first. Now, when you first place this in, it's obviously not going to be powered. Do sometimes get these rubber things, which just allows you to feed the wire out of the camera seamlessly and allows you still to close the clasp that would normally enclose the battery. At this point, we're then going to plug in the dummy 
three battery, which will give continuous power to the camera itself. So now when we turn it on, the zoom function and the screen should turn on, and that will indicate that it's actually working from a power point of view. Now at this point, if it doesn't explode or burn out or cause any problems or feel super warm after a couple of minutes, it's a good sign that the battery pack is a good match to the camera itself. But again, just check the input output power to make sure you're not burning out your camera there. So now that we've got the camera actually powered, we now need to get the signal from the camera into the actual computer ourselves. So this is where the cam link will come into play. So we're simply going to unbox the cam link 4K. We're going to plug one end into the USB into your computer, and then we're going to plug the HDMI mini into the Sony A5100 and the other end of that HDMI wire into the cam link. That will give a HDMI conversion from HDMI to USB, which means your computer can receive that signal and it can see everything that your camera sees. That's going to be vitally important when we then come to setting it up within OBS Studio. Now, you've got to be careful here, the size of HDMI wire here. If you get a wire that's too short, you may not get as much manipulation on the camera that you need. I found, for example, that I initially started with a two to three meter wire on the camera here, but as my stream studio got a little bit bigger, that actually a five meter wire was more useful. So I eventually got rid of the wire. And also the wires can take quite a lot of wear and tear. So it's worth spending an extra couple of pounds on a good quality HDMI wire. I will link in the description, the Amazon links to the products I've bought. This camera is now set up from a hardware point of view to be able to stream continuously within OBS Studio or to any other streaming platform. So first up on the Sony A5100 in terms of the camera settings, there's a few really key settings we need to cover here, but most of the rest is just personal preference, such as lighting, continuous shutter, that kind of stuff here. You do need to make sure that the image size is the maximum size you want it to be and the aspect ratio, I would recommend setting to 16 by nine. In terms of recording setting, I've set this to 14 by 1080. I've set the file format to be MP4. The focus mode here, I'm putting AFC, which is continuous auto focus. And there's also a setting that you can adjust here to make sure that the auto focus is uh, faster or slower as well. In terms of ISO, I've set mine to auto ISO because that just adjusts the lighting as needed. I'm letting the camera do the work there, but you may prefer to set that to a hard lighting amount. And that again is just personal preference. You may want to turn on the auto face detection there as well. And also I'd recommend turning on the steady shot as well. This just stabilizes in case you bang your desk or something like that. We want to set it to 1080p on the camera. That'll give a 1080p output. You may want a 4K here if you've got a 4K camera. And also here, the most important thing is make sure you're getting a clean HDMI output. By clean HDMI output, what we mean here is that we're not getting the information displayed from the camera onto your video feed itself. You want it to obviously be completely free of clutter from things you would see on your camera normally. So turning off the HDMI info display here will remove any information there and have a clean HDMI output. Can look at the version information of the camera as well on the Sony A5100 and most cameras do have this. Pressing down on this wheel here will give you the different shooting modes. You want to make sure that you're on the video shooting mode here, the, the movie mode. If you're on another mode here, it may not work for continuous shooting. So make sure you're on this video mode here. From a camera point of view there, I've gone through most of the settings that you're probably going to encounter, particularly on the Sony A5100. But most of the rest of the settings are just totally personal preference. So now let's get into the differences between a webcam and a DLSR slash mirrorless camera. Now there's a lot more kit and technology that goes inside of a DLSR or mirrorless camera than you would find in a webcam. But a webcam is a complete solution. It's got all the sensors, the microphone, it's got the power incorporated from USB. So the webcam's designed to be something you just buy, plug in, and then you tweak the settings on the programs that you're using it. For example, on OBS Studio. Now that's not to say that when you plug in a mirrorless or a DLSR camera, you can't do anything in OBS Studio with the settings. You still can do all of that stuff. It just means you get a lot more control with a DLSR or a mirrorless camera over the settings that you're going to apply for the camera itself. And that's at hardware level. One of the main advantages to using a webcam, of course, is just its ease of use. You can plug it in and go with it. And also the price point of a webcam tends to be a lot lower. The thing is these days, there are so many different webcams out there. I'm starting to find that the lower price point of the mirrorless camera cameras is almost reaching parity with the higher price point of the webcams. Problem is the higher price point of the webcams is not matching the lower end quality of the mirrorless cameras in my opinion. So I still think it's better value personally to go with a mirrorless or a DLSR camera. And the reason being you can then use that camera when you go on your holidays and do other things. You can use the camera as its camera purpose, but you cannot take a webcam abroad with you and start taking pictures of like 
the Eiffel Tower or something like that. A massive part of a mirrorless or a DLSR camera is that you can change the lenses, which make a really big difference to the overall lighting that you can get into the camera and the overall shot quality. And it gives you a huge amount of customization. You simply don't get that with a webcam. Now, some of the more modern webcams do allow you some degree of change and settings for the focus and also the lighting, how much you can zoom and aperture and things like that. But they're still nowhere near the standard of even the oldest of the mirrorless cameras. The Sony A5100 is something like 10 years old and the best webcams out there do not compete with a mirrorless camera. Now I paid at the time something like three or four hundred pounds for my Sony A5100. You can now get these at like two or two hundred and fifty pounds. Again, check the description below to see the pricing of those currently for the Sony A5100. You'll see it's now come down considerably in pricing. Now the drawback is that you do need to get all the other things for a mirrorless or a DLSR camera that enable you to stream. So that would be of course the HDMI wire. You need to get some sort of cam link, something that could convert the signal from a HDMI HDMI to a USB, you also need something that can power the camera as well. But overall, these things are not that expensive in comparison to the price of the camera. So here we are inside of OBS Studio. I'm going to show you now how you can set up the mirrorless camera or the DLSR camera on the cam link from Elgato within OBS Studio. Nice and easy. It really doesn't take long this at all. Now, if you've set up the hardware the way that I showed you and you've considered some of the troubleshooting tips, you should hopefully just be able to add it as a source and it's a video display source that the Elgato cam link will appear as and I'll show you what this looks like. So we just need to go into any scene that you want to add the new cam link device to. We click on the plus icon here and we want to go on video to capture device to so adding a new video capture device. Now I've already got the Sony ZV-1 here used so I'm just going to add existing here but if you're setting this, this up for the first time you would say video capture device and create a new one and give it a name. Now, if you're setting this up for the first time, you wouldn't see this here. You would just see the actual property screen. So I'm going to right click and go on properties here. It's this screen here that you will see if you're setting up for the first time. Now, what you may see if you've got more than one cam links is you'll see the same name duplicated. So you just need to cycle through the cam link 4Ks to check which one it was that you want on the scene that you're adding. And you just need to make sure that this is actually clicked to activate. Now, it shows deactivate here. If I want want to deactivate it, it will deactivate it. And then when I click activate, it should appear again, as you can see. We can now configure the video here. If we want, we can change some settings here. I'm not going to do any of that and all of these other settings here. In essence, we now have the mirrorless camera in OBS Studio, which we can just manipulate wherever we want to. So here is a side by side comparison of the Sony A5100 mirrorless camera with the Cam Link 4K in comparison to the Logitech C920. Now, I know that the Logitech C920 is not a particularly high end webcam. It's probably regarded as sort of an entry to mid-level webcam by this point, particularly at its price point at the sort of $50 to $60 mark. It's still a very good camera to have as a webcam if you're just starting out with streaming. However, if you want to upgrade your camera quality, as you can see straight away here, the color depth, the quality, the sharpness, everything about the Sony A5100 on the left here is so much better than a webcam. So in that regard, if you're going to compare a mirrorless camera with a webcam it's basically not comparable webcams are just not as good the quality of the sensors is generally not as good and of course the lenses and everything about them are just not as good i said i would go through some troubleshooting so here are just some side notes that are probably worth noting if you're having some trouble there's probably an infinite amount of trouble that you may run into with this hopefully i'll give you a good feel of how you can set it up and hopefully you're able to successfully do that but i'll give you some information about what i know and issues that I've experienced so far with setting up a mirrorless or a DLSR camera. First of all, if you find you're getting echoing with the DLSR or mirrorless camera, there's a good chance that you've simply not muted the microphone from the camera itself. Now, most mirrorless or DLSR cameras will come with a microphone built in. There's a chance that most of you watching this have got some sort of dedicated microphone that you're going to be used, whether that's a USB or an XLR microphone, it doesn't really matter. The likelihood is that that's going to be much better quality than the quality of the microphone on the camera itself. In which 
which case you just need to make sure that you go into the audio mixer we want to right click and make sure that we're unhiding all of the audio sources and where you've got the camera located you just want to probably drag the volume down to this and mute it here as well and then what i'm going to do is right click it and hide that source as well so it's muted it's turned down it's hidden the audio source can't cause any echoing with inside your recordings or inside your twitch streams next up you may find that you can't add the camera across multiple different versions of obs studio or if you want to use for example the camera both in obs studio and something like discord or somewhere else now i've noticed in particular the cam links do struggle and you sometimes get like a green or purple blurring effect when you switch on the camera across multiple different applications if that happens all you need to do is close the applications down turn the camera off and you may want to try unplugging and replugging in the cam link then what you need to do is make sure that you're not opening more than one program that is using the camera at the same time so don't worry too much if you get that coloring issue it can happen i've experienced it a lot it's normally a sign that the cam link is trying to be used across multiple applications however i do have a video which i'll link over here which is a video to show you how you can use the same camera across multiple different applications you more than likely will find that video very useful if you are encountering the purple or green effect that you get with the cam link sometimes now the final bit of troubleshooting i'll just note here is just about the power it's really vitally important and i underline it that you get the power output of the dummy battery correct to the camera that you're ordering every camera has a different power need some more lighter modern cameras don't need as much power some of the older cameras need a lot more power so when you're ordering the dummy battery don't just assume that it's the correct battery for your device now i'm going to link in the description below a dummy battery for a sony a5100 and also for a sony zv1 but you do need to just check the power output of that battery versus the battery input and the way that you do this is by looking at the numbers that are on the battery itself for the camera that you're using but as long as the power is about the same number then you're going to be fine but if you're trying to for example an 8 watt output battery and then convert it with a dummy battery that is providing 12 watts input that's definitely like 50 percent more power than the camera needs clearly the camera is going to overheat it's going to break your camera don't comment below and say that i didn't warn you please i accept absolutely zero responsibility or liability if you break your camera you have been warned so there we go that was how to set up a mirrorless camera for streaming including all the work that you've got to do on obs studio and the pros and cons of doing it versus using a webcam hopefully you found it useful really appreciate if you can hit the like feel free to subscribe again and have a great day take care